Defining Organic Production. This is Unit 2 of SLF 114. Um, I'm Julie Larson, and I'm the be the narrator, and I'm also a developer of this course. So what is organic? What do we mean by organic agriculture? You can have uh, very broad terms, which would just mean no synthetic chemicals uh, for soil health or for pest management. Um, organic in itself, you know, if you think of organic chemistry, that's just regard, um, concerning carbon-based um, uh, molecules and carbon-based uh, uh, items. Um, so you can have a very broad sense of what organic means to what's very specific. So you could have uh, what we'll be talking about uh, later on is the Organic Materials Review Institute's list for organic production, uh, otherwise known as OMRI, uh, the OMRI list. Uh, many times you'll see that labeling on products that are okay to use in certified organic production uh, that the NOP has uh, decided is okay to use. Um, but they are a uh, separate group who oversees the uh, what products come on the market, whether or not they should be certified for organic use. And this is for uh, fertilizers, um, herbicides, pesticides, uh, any kind of uh, soil amendments uh, um, that you might want to use. Uh, so they have to, if you see OMRI certified, uh, you're generally in good shape to use that product if you are certified organic. The other thing about the, so many terms are, are tossed around. We hear organic, but we also hear natural, and um, there's a few others that are very popular, but they really have no meaning. You could label something all natural, and what does that really mean? Um, there really is no overseeing board that allows people to use that um, or not use that terminology. Uh, whereas if something is certified organic, it has been um, it has been uh, uh, there are standards with which it has to meet. One of the first organizations that um, was instrumental in um, pulling together uh, many different uh, organic organizations, organic agricultural organizations. Um, the name of the group is IFOM, which stands for International Federation of Organic Agricultural Movements. And uh, they have almost 800 affiliates in over 117 countries. Uh, they have four principles that they sort of um, work from, and it's the first is the principle of health, which is not just the health of people, but also the health of uh, the animals, the um, environments that the animals live in. Uh, the second one is the principle of ecology, which is how all of these things work together. You have the soil, the animals, the people, the uh, all working together. Not one of them is, is one separate group. Uh, principle of fairness, which means that um, when you're thinking of labor and equality, uh, this has to be taken into account also. And finally, the principle of care, which is the responsibility we all have to taking care of the world around us. The USDA's National Organic Program, or what we'll be referring to quite often, is called the NOP. Uh, it the, um, gives specific standards and requirements for agriculture, for growers. So they determine what's okay to use for soil inputs, seed selection, if you were to um, buy seeds for Anything on your farm, if you're certified organic, you have to buy organic certified, certified organic seed. Uh, uh, also land management, what you do with your land, how you um, 
uh, weed, how you uh, compost, all of that has standards that have to be met. Um, also livestock health. Uh, we'll be looking more in this class about um, the uh, vegetable production and herb production, but there is a whole other section that uh, relates to livestock health. Um, and it also, uh, the processors and the food handlers must be um, organic certified also. So um, there's many different levels uh, with, under which the NLP program works. Here in the Midwest, when we think of organic production, the things that we think about mostly um, are vegetables, herbs, and flowers. Uh, certainly can produce um, orchard fruit and small fruit, such as uh, strawberries and raspberries. Uh, some of the more unusual berries, aronia berries, uh, some other unusual uh, berries are also uh, becoming quite popular in the Midwest. Um, elderberries, um, also up and coming, tremendous amount of health benefits uh, that do quite well in the Midwest. Um, also, livestock, whether it's uh, cattle, pork, beef, um, uh, cattle, pork, Goat, sheep, um, poultry, of course. Also rabbits will fit into the organic production. Um, next, you might want to think about row crops, grains, um, wheat, corn, soybeans, um, anything that you could grow on a large scale. And using, of course, you'd need to have larger equipment for that. Um, also, sometimes uh, organic production will include seed producers because if you're certified organic, you have to buy certified organic seed. Um, and uh, this is a whole business in itself. It can be very lucrative. And then other, which if you are going to uh, what they consider to be value added, maybe you buy certified organic um uh, fruit and you produce your own jams and jellies um, that certainly for the Midwest would be quite viable with organic uh, certification uh, when we're thinking of vegetables herbs flowers even shrubs for uh, um, uh, there are some flower growers who also grow certified organic shrubs so that they can take the florist uh, different um, springtime uh, flowers. Uh, we usually think smaller acreage, uh, 1 to 20 acres, uh, can be diversified or just one crop. Um, and most of these folks uh, go to farmers markets or they do what's considered a community supported agriculture, a CSA, where uh, you, uh, where your customers will buy um, a summer's worth or a year's worth of produce up front, and each week you provide them, the farmer provides them with a box or a bag or whatever you're doing, uh, full of uh, what you have promised them or what you hope that you will have available for them. This gives the farmer a way to um, have money in the bank to start out to buy seed, to buy um, things they need to get their farms going instead of at the end of it, very hard to um, get started sometimes because you need some money up front. Or else independent grocery stores. Uh, for most small independent Growers, um, uh, you can go to co-ops, uh, small grocery stores, because generally you're not going to have, um, you're not going to be able to, if you go to Whole Foods, they're going to require a large amount of product in order to fulfill all their store needs. With an orchard or small fruit business, 
uh, we usually think of a small to medium acreage from 1 to 40 acres. Um, generally, they're diversified, or they can be one crop. Maybe you just grow apples or maybe just peaches. Uh, these folks also, these farmers, go to mostly farmer's markets. They do CSAs. There's a number of fruit CSAs or apple CSAs um, in the Midwest. Uh, also, independent grocery stores. And uh, what we think of as a you pick, where people come into your orchard or your farm and they actually pick uh, what they want and you uh, charge them per pound or per bag, however you have figured that out. If you're producing livestock, um, generally the acreage you can require for poultry, you don't need a whole lot. Uh, again, of course, it depends on if uh, who you are intending to provide, um, how many chickens or turkeys you're planning to grow uh, to large acreage. If you're going to do cattle, uh, especially if you're going to do grass-fed, um, they're going to be out on pasture. Cows eat a lot. They need to be moved a lot. So you're going to have to have the acreage that can um, uh, feed them. Usually with livestock, people do one or two species, but certainly not impossible to do more than that. Um, you can sell either live animals or processed cuts, so you would have to go uh, to a processor, and if you're certified organic, you have to find a processor that will, uh, or a locker that is certified organic. Um, and they have to abide by those rules, and uh, you will have to show certification of your meat processor that they are certified organic. So a livestock producer, you same idea. Far, most of the time they do farmer's markets, uh, community-supported agriculture, independent grocery stores, and, of course, restaurants um, uh, would be included in that also. Row crops uh, will take more land, so medium to large acreage we usually think of, 40 uh, to hundreds of acres. Uh, usually current row crop farmers, uh, usually you have your large machinery uh, in order to uh, work that land. Uh, you can look at the ag commodities. We think of so corn, soybean, wheat, oats, uh, and your your who you'd be selling to would be organic livestock farmers, livestock feed mills, or to do some kind of organic networking. If uh, you were doing wheat, maybe you'd find a organic certified organic bakery that was looking for um, your certified organic wheat. A seed producer is going to require uh, anywhere from small to large acreage. Of course, it depends on who your intended customer base, right? So you're going to have to raise those plants first and then have the way and the infrastructure to collect the seed, package it, and to sell it. And you're going to be selling to organic growers. Um, so if you're going to want to sell to uh, row crop farmers, you're going to need a lot of acreage if you're going to be sell to medicine, uh, certified organic medicinal herb um, farmer. Maybe you could um, do that on a smaller scale with one to two acres. Other possibilities, uh, compost, organic growers need, and some just small uh, backyard gardeners like to have certified organic compost. Uh, maybe you would uh, start a worm ranch, right? Compost for soil health. You could do that under a certified organic label. Uh, certified organic mushrooms. Again, farmers markets, restaurants, small groceries, um, aquaponics. No standard yet, but they are moving towards it. Uh, because they haven't really come up with a organic feed yet for the, the different fish. Uh, and also there's some other issues with aquaponics, but uh, that will be happening fairly soon.
And then, of course, whatever you can think of. Uh, really, it's a wide open market at this place. Um, if you are close to a metropolitan area, boy, you you could really find a niche market, um, get certified organic, and uh, you can can um, uh, have a, a wide open market.